Kiss and good life. Goodbye. Alright, 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 alright. Hey, it's Wolfman Jack. Anybody even know who the hell that was? I'd be shocked. I would be. I barely know who he is. Alright. Let's see what we got here. This is going to be a bit interesting. Okay? Because to try to make it so you guys can see everything, I, I wish you could see this setup. Because right now I've got the tripod like right in my fucking mix. And I know there's nobody here viewing already, so it's already cool. I can just give this whole thing a, yeah, to nobody. Um, yeah, we'll start with that one. Um, but so I'm going to be kind of awkward here in how I'm set up to try to draw. Um, so forgive me a little bit. And your vision of this, the still life here that we're going to be working off of, um, is different than mine, obviously. So, you know, most humble apologies. Uh, I, uh, I'm kind of winging this because um, I've got this commission lined up for my friend Jeff. Uh, which is one of the canvases we were working on last night. And um, the pictures he sent me are good, but they're, they're, they're not quite where I wanted to be. Um, so what I would like to do is go there myself to his house. But to do that means I have to do it on weekend because he lives too far away for me to do it on like, you know, after work one day. So I don't get to take the reference pictures I need until Saturday. So that means for our normal stream nights tonight, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, I'm kind of open. I don't know what to do. So I figured, all right, I was trying to do a drawing thing when I was on vacation. I thought, okay, well, quick, I'll do a drawing thing tonight. So that'll get us through part of it. Um, I might do another one, a longer session. You know, I'll see if I can come up with something. I mean, literally, this was like, found out tonight, I'm like, oh, crap, I better come up with something. You know what, let me put... No, that's not going to make it any better. Never mind. I was going to put on another light, but I realized that that's on the same side, so it's just going to make it even more dark. Shout out. Um, I'll try to keep pulling back and remember. Sorry about being a southpaw. It'd be so much easier if I was like this, right? Anyway. Um, what else was I going to say? Actually, you know what? I'm going to try one other thing. Let me try something different. Hold on. I'll be right back. For... I'm playing with some lights. Uh, it looks like it might help you guys a little better. Let's see what's going on. I mean, I know it was like really intense here, which is nice, but I think the hard shadows might have been too much. Um, so, again, in the uh, spirit of this channel, my idea of hopefully having people draw with me or paint with me and all that stuff. Grab some stuff around your house. If you're watching and you want to, you know, if you're watching and you want to come along with this journey, grab some stuff around your house. Um, I'm going to try to make this so I can, like, get in here. See this? Like I said, I'm, I'm working around a, a tr tripod with cameras not even on the top of the tripod. They're kind of hanging off of the mid bar. Um, so it's a little entertaining how I'm going to pull this off. And I'm probably going to knock them off once or twice uh, through this session. Fair warning. Those with motion sickness might want to look elsewhere. Um, but grab some stuff around your house if you want to and, and try to draw along. I mean, cup, saucer, whatever, you know, whatever you got. I literally found these two things. I forgot we had them. My wife and I have not used this coffee cup. Like, we have a, we have a whole set. I haven't used them in, in God knows how long. You know, we've got all, like, the cutesy co coffee mugs. I was like, oh, shit, I can use these. I like using stuff. Um, let's check to see. Am I in focus? Uh... It's going to be easier once I get some stuff on the paper. Um, I like using stuff without logos on it, if I can. Um, 
or if I hide if I can hide them, just because I don't consider myself a pop artist in any way, shape, or form, and so I don't want to um, really get involved with any of that. Like I'm not trying to. I mean, if I have to, I have to. You know, somebody's wearing a shirt that has something on it, and obviously. Um, You know, I've got no choice. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. Um, I'm just not very good with logos, too. So it's knowing my weakness and just trying to avoid it. You know? Why try to conquer your weaknesses when you can just run away from them? It's terrible life advice. Of course, if you're coming to my channel looking for life advice, you've come to the wrong place. Why would you take life advice from a dude who like, cracked like a year ago? Um, see, I did this. Uh, I, I recorded something. Now I can tell it's definitely not in focus, so we're going to work on that a little bit. That's uh, going to get a little better right there. Okay. It'll be better once I actually to put in some darker pencils. I'm just laying down some groundwork here. I had done this or I tried to do this when I was on vacation. And as I said, it did not work very well. Um, our internet server sucked, and I couldn't get it recorded. I couldn't get it uploaded. So there's stuff that I talked about regarding actually just basic drawing stuff, and I'll, I'll try to do them again and try to remember them. Um, you know, for me, it's a different thing in how I can present three dimensions here versus how I can do it, you know, uh, on canvas with paint. Um, I will focus more on trying to build the form uh, in the early, you know, in the drawing bit and in the early part of the drawing specifically to make sure that I can get that feel of three dimensionality. Um, I did it on my other drawing, but I'm going to do it on this one too because I want to make sure it's there. Let me get my little mechanical pencil out just so you guys can see it. When you're talking about like a cup or something like that, now I'm skipping this. I should I shouldn't do it. I should be like good and like show you guys, but um, it's a cylinder carved away. So you know now he's got this cup's got a little bit underneath here. There's a couple of little like extra bits. Um, I don't know if they very visible like right here for you guys but it's where like the color tone changes and hold on I cannot this is something I had on there for my daughter not for me all right um I got audio tonight like music tonight so I'm happy um but if you picture this as a cylinder to start a very stunted little cylinder you know and we're looking down at too so it's not really um, going to be perfectly upright. Let me get my little kneaded eraser here. Where was the one I used? There we go. So we're dealing with something that's actually in a little bit of perspective here. You know, I'm especially, you guys are more so if you're looking off my uh, camera. But for me, it's just sort of drifting down. Cause we're, we can see the top here. And just trying to draw some guidelines here. Hopefully these are visible. I'll strike them up in this. Okay. So if you picture the cylinder, if it were just to keep going on into space. Alright. You're going to see the sides of the cup. Like, we're going to carve into this. And then I'll race it out. I got my needed eraser here, baby, because that, that sucker is so good. I know I've touted on the, the paintings, but if you haven't, if you're going to draw, paint, whatever, needed erasers, baby. These fuckers can hold a ton. There's a little bit. There's a little bit here. You see that little black little thing I'm holding? It's just tons of tons of graphite in there already. Um, but so you're imagining, like I said here, now this cylinder... These lines down here, past this point, are just going to keep going until they eventually would meet a point. You know, basic perspective ideas. Um, if we were to take it to like an extreme, 
think I'm going to take it up here. So we're going to just, again, I'm not making a cup. I'm making a cylinder. But, like, we're going to take that guy here. And, again, I'm not using straight edges or anything like that. Just sort of eyeballing it, but that's okay. All right. And, you know, if any lines that we would make on this cup or on the cylinder here are going to follow that path. They're going to all eventually meet up somewhere down here, hanging out. Maybe chilling, relaxing, yeah. Max and cool. Shooting some b-ball. That's how it's cool. Um, and then as you were to, if you were to carve the lines in to give volume, I'm going to slide this in so you guys can see it a little better. It's a little better. It's not great because, again, shitty cameras. And I kind of half-assed this setup tonight, so. so it's kind of an emergency to figure out what to do tonight. But we're getting our, you know. And this is kind of, and I know this might be basic stuff, but even earlier when I was bypassing this, I'm still thinking about this. I may be already ready to carve in, so I'm like, all right, well, this is what I'm going to do here. It has a little bit of a shape, you know. So I've started already cutting away on those lines that go on at Finium. Uh, but I'm still thinking of them. I'm still trying to put them in my head. Um, Now, the nice thing with this little mug here is, as I said, now the parts that I don't think they will be very visible to you guys, but this little extra base helps with the volume a little bit of the base because there are these three little segments, you know, as they were carved in together. And it gives it a little bit of, you know, th those guidelines. Like I said, if you're imagining these carvings up here, um, to kind of give you a little bit of volume there, give you that space that lets you know, hey, this is how this thing goes. Now you may say, based on my vision here and what you guys see through there, that you might be able to tell that from my angle, this little guy is in front of this thing. That's very true. I'm drawing through everything. Um, if you're drawing, you know, again, it's it's not painting, you know. And even painting, you could pull it off. You know, you always go back and change stuff and re-edit. Um, but, you know, it's like, it's always been kind of on my head to, to just Get your details down, you know, get, get your forms in, and then race the shit out of it when you're, you know, build off what you need to know. Now, this little guy, hopefully this is visible through there. I think it's it's kind of a little, like, the, this is cut at an angle compared to the, t to the table, all right? So it's like, if the, the, they're not flat across like the cup is. Cup and table. This guy's cut it across a little bit. So it's going to make it a little difficult. And the way we're going to think about this one, I'm going to put it up here. Instead of being, because it's very roundy. It's, we're going to put it sort of like a sphere. All right. And we're not even talking about shadowing yet. We're not going to get there yet. I want you guys to think about it like a, like, almost like a wireframe. Um, if I ever had uh, the video for the uh, recorded one I did when I was in Virginia, which I wasn't even sure if it worked, uh, it does look like it did, but um, you might hear me say this again, but it's worth stating again. Um, if you're not familiar with the program Blender, it's a free program for three-dimensional design. I was trying to learn to do like computer graphics and stuff um, a while back, and I sort of fell off my lessons. But the thing about it is it's got some great stuff in there just to get, like, basic shapes. 
truth be told, I could probably just like open up a blender window and just create a quick still life with like cylinders and a sphere and whatever, you know, triangle real quick, whatever. And, and boom, we'd be ready to go like that. Maybe I will do that. That might be a good one for later this week. Um, just to get an idea of like, you know, something to actually not using the wrong pencil to do my roughs. But you know, it's, it's, it's a great way because you can throw on the, the um, wireframe view of it. And now you've got like, you know, you'll have all your little cutaways. You'll be able to see all these little lines. So as you move it around and you jerk around that, that object, whatever it may be that you're making, um, it's, uh, it's really clean. It's, it's nice. It, it's like, okay, all right, how the hell does that thing work like this? And then boom, there it is. You can just do it. Um, yeah, you can all but mechanically draw it if you wanted to. It, it makes it so simple. Yeah, you know, for me when I was learning it, the the modeling of stuff really didn't that wasn't very hard for me. The when it was coming to the blender, it was all about trying to do the animation, where I started getting fucked up. My computer, the computer I was originally learning on couldn't handle it at all. This one barely does it um, at a um, time efficient manner. And then I like I said I hit a roadblock. Um, when my computer, the, my kids broke this before. I had to fix it. Um, they, the power plug actually popped out. Um, it was disjointed from them. So I had to like, get, you know, a whole new system, take the whole computer apart. That was fun. If you've never disassembled a laptop, don't ever do it again. No. It's terrible. It's... And the worst part was I was, I was nearly done fixing it. Got the, I'd gotten the part I wanted, yeah, needed. Got all the things done. I had to get a new base as well, like a new, new bottom base part, and um, and the power cord, and uh, nearly finished. And I'm about to put the battery back on, and I was like, well, you know, this one little power cord, like nib here, doesn't quite look right. I'm gonna take that out and put it back in a little better. And I went to pull it, and I pulled one of the little wires that go into the plug. And I had to do it again. I was, like I said, I was not a... I think my neighbors heard my fuck. And I'm not saying my neighbors, like, in the house next to me. I'm thinking, like, people, like, two blocks over probably heard me shout the word fuck on that one. Because, like, literally, I was down here in the basement, and I was, like I said, f fiddling with it. And I actually, when I screwed it up, I actually heard my kids run up the steps, like, to their rooms. You know, they didn't know what was wrong. They didn't want to find out, you know. They just figured out that he's going to be in a bad mood suddenly, and it's best to make sure we weren't the problem. I think they were ready to move out. It wasn't them. That time. And so I was wondering, I went upstairs and I apologized to let them know that it wasn't anything that they had done. Nobody else was in trouble. It was just that he was upset with himself. Because I remember when I was little, it used to be the same thing. Dad get pissed off at something, and I'd hear him scream it, and fuck, maybe we all better go. But see, the funny thing is, like I said, going back to blenders, it actually took, I took to it pretty well again for the modeling stuff at least, primarily because. I already think like this a lot of times. I'm already thinking in these, you know, uh, rounded terms. Yeah. We're going to bring that out a little bit because there's actually a little lip down there. It's a little hard to see. Again, it's probably not on your guys' version, your, your cutaway. 
I just want to pop it out a little bit. All right, now let's get this sucker in here. Oh, I, I got distracted. When it comes to this this part here, now we're thinking about a ball. And if you're looking at a ball, the one nice thing about a ball in perspective is it's always a ball. No matter what you do, no matter how you angle it, it's always going to pretty much look the same because you're always going to look at some diameter, you know, one way or the other. I'm drawing these a little light. I'm sorry. I should make sure they're darker for you guys to see. So yeah, if you see, like, you know, these types of lines, boop, boop, you know. I know I'm not, you know, Jado, I can't do a perfect circle, but. So what we're thinking about with this one is a ball where you, like, take a, like, slice out of it, like that. So if you think about that type of roundness, it's going to kind of look like, you know, we take that part out. It's now kind of angled so that this part would now be like a like a more of a flat surface. Now again, it curves in, so we'll think about it a little different once we get past that point. But if we were to kind of like again think about this this part in perspective, we're looking at kind of like a, a little rectangular spot. I hope this is visible. We've got so many pencils and marks on top of each other now; it's starting to become. But they're going to kind of converge on each other again, more like a two-point perspective thing going on here. That part's probably going to be pretty close to that. And then you would put the ball. That's getting messy, so I'm going to do this again a little cleaner here. Um, I want to picture that top part a little bit. If you think about however a square is going to kind of look in perspective. All right. Like I said, we're going two points here. And I'm just kind of roughing it. I'm not going to be 100% sure that I'm making these. Because there should be a horizon line out here somewhere. And these, these parts, eh, it's pretty close. Yeah, not too bad. Here's a trying to draw comic books without using a ruler. I've gotten pretty good at it. But if you're trying to draw a circle, it's almost easier to think about a box first. And if you're trying to find your center of your circle, there's your box, right? You do those corners. That's your center point. So you can always work on that. And then from there, Wee. And we cover them away. Again. Again, I tend not to focus too much when I'm doing it on my own, unless I absolutely need to. Um, you know, unless I'm literally struggling with a single part of it that's not coming out for me, or whatever. I um, I just kind of work my way through it in my head. And so you might see me time and time again sometimes work something over and work something over until I figure out that it feels right. Uh, there's also little subtle cues you can kind of take if you're looking at um, where things line up. I want to jump out of here for a sec see this a little bigger it's not gonna be much better but i wanted to look at it um so like i'm trying to look at how it looks up to you guys you can use where parts match up to each other um if you're not familiar with the artist giacometti now i urge you do not go to the extreme that he did unless you like the way his shit looked at the end of it i never did but he was always about obsessing with those little points of, you know, how's this part roll into, like, you know, the cup here? Does it make kind of, like, it kind of makes like an S on your guys' screen here. You know, the, this part follows up here. And again, thinking of it as a two-dimensional screen, which helps with you guys right now looking at this because you're watching a two-dimensional screen. It's really easy to kind of flatten out um, if you're using this. You know, if you're using the still life as I've put it in front of you. If you're building one yourself you got to kind of flatten out in your head 
Um, one thing that helps with that, close an eye. If you're having trouble, you know, our eyes look at three dimensions because there's two eyes looking at something from a little slightly different angle. You can circumvent that a little bit by actually going, like, you know, just close one eye and suddenly now it's a uh, flatter, you know. And you can only, then by that point, are only judging things in depth by kind of like how far away they are, you know. Like what, what little distance might look like but not be depth. That, it's hard to explain, but I hope I'm, I hope I'm doing it. I'm terrible at stuff like this. Um, is that right? Where are we at here with that? That's going to kind of be a nice little chunky. It's not lining up very well. Maybe I should go out a little like that. So you see, I am doing a few guidelines here just to kind of keep it relatively close. And as I said, when I do my drawing, uh, it, yeah, do my paintings, I'm not 100% concerned with being 100% accurate. I like my stuff to be very close if I can. Um, you know. I really prefer, especially like if I'm doing like a, a landscape or something like that, that the person would be able to find the place and still go, this is where he did the drawing, or this is where he did the painting, you know. Um, and they might go, well, but he was off of that tree. And I really don't give a shit about that. You know, whatever. It's not about the exactness for me. It's about the feeling of it and making sure that you know, that feeling is associated with the place nine times out of ten where I'm working from. So when I use my photos, as I've said before, I don't prefer to do it. I, I really do, really, really, really do prefer to paint plain air. Um, but I don't really get that option much anymore. So... Do that to annoy the hell out of my. I'm just thinking to myself, my friends, who's commissioning me, yeah, you know, I have to go up to his house to take photos, but I can just go up with a canvas and sit out front of his house for a few hours a day, yeah. Or for the fact that I have my kids with me. That's where I keep getting stuck with the the whole thing. I'm like, oh, I can go. No, no, I can't do that. Yeah, you know, we got my wife's going out uh, on a trip with my mother, like a bus trip or something to New York or something, and uh. So, I got the kitties. With any luck, um, hopefully my mother-in-law will take my youngest to the pool on Saturday. And that would give me time to do the run out to get the uh, photos I need. Now, in case anyone's wondering from last night, but I don't think there was anybody who really watched it last night, so I'm sure there's nobody wondering. The uh, canvases we stretched, they are all done. Um, I added the second coat to the uh, third and fourth canvas we did last night um, for the uh, gesso tonight. So I took my son to the karate, dropped him off, and then I uh, came home real quick, put the gesso on, Ran back when he had about maybe 10 minutes left in his class. So we got it done. So we have four canvases now ready to go. I have one, two, three, four, five? I think five more that I could actually uh, stretch if I wanted to. So we got lots of canvases to work off of. Now, again, I want to show this just so you guys can see it. Now, the cup lid here, this, I think it's a sugar bowl. It's 
got a little bit of volume to it too. Now it's like a little bit of a like a little bump. It's like a little bonus. So I'm gonna start trying to trim away some of the perspective ones I did. So you guys can kinda of see the sucker. I'm not gonna leave them there for very long, but Shine in your light, gonna make everything, baby, gonna make, make everything alright. And I ain't got no worries, cause I ain't in no hurry at all. Anyway, I always forget this. I should always make sure you guys know where to find me. Facebook at you some funky Dixie Lane pretty my breaking song around. Oh, no, not that number. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, all right, and then. Follow on Twitter. Not that literally anyone has ever done this yet, because so far I still have the same Twitter followers that I had when I joined Twitter. <laughs> same four. I'm a loser on there. Truth be told, I, I barely tweet. I tweet only when I'm about to go live because it's synced up to the Facebook page. So it's like Facebook's probably the best way to keep track of me. Um, what else? France, coffee, mugs, phone, cases, other beauties. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, not now. There we go. That's all the major ones. There's a Patreon out there, too, but I don't really know how to get it really going, going. I thought I had some pretty good, uh, you know, reward setups, but I'm not 100% sure. And, uh, let's see. Now, the way I did this, when I changed the lighting on it, it really did shift the whole look of this for me. Um, I'm sure if you were at the beginning of this broadcast, you saw it too, how much it, like, shifted. Like, it really did. Just everything was like that way. It's almost like a macabre uh, like lighting setup. Mm, no, this is not feeling it for me. No, not that either. No, listen to that last night. I right, do California love. I do listen to this one a lot, but whatever. California knows how to party. California knows how to party. Well, this one's really interesting because, again, these, the little base of them gives us some volume, but it's very interesting because the kind of top line of that goes under because of this ball-like shape um, earlier than the bottom one does. So it's got this weird little almost confusing look to it. It makes sense, but it's just sort of confusing to look at. 
And again, your guys' angle's different, so it's not going to be quite the same. But you should see that, too. If you can even get it big, this thing big enough to look at, because, I mean... Ten years making rap tunes. Ever since honey's wearing Sassoon. Watch me diamond shining, looking like I Rob Liberace. It's all good. From Diego to the Bay. The city is a bomb if your city making pay. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna try to fuck up the focus so I won't ever get it back. See, I can't even get it back now. There we go. All right, never mind. How about can I fuck this one up? Good for you. That actually looks a little better. That just looks a little better from. Oh, you shake, shake it, baby. Let's just see how it looks on the bigger. Eh, it's a little better. You got larger to get any shot of it. And I know you guys aren't looking at like the, uh, the game spot there fully, but you know, that's what you gotta do. Sometimes you gotta like use your intuition to figure out, all right. Do you trim it so that the Guinness is just part of it? Do you, do you work on it so that it... Uh, I'm going to need to make some room for the Guinness bottle, actually, because I'll make sure none of this stuff's getting in the way. No ambition, no band. It's a cold jam. So what you say? What did that bomb be from Dre? I should ask, do you guys want any color in these too? Like if I if I do another drawing episode. Um I got a bunch of colored pencils. I even have some watercolor pencils. And I haven't played with them yet. I've had them for a while now. Um actually since last Prime Day I ordered them. Um So I mean, yeah, a few days after that is when I got them. But I um I have not played with them. So I'm just wondering if anybody would be interested in that. I was kind of thinking that, so I can't really, I don't want to start another painting because I have this commission lined up. So I don't want to be like in the middle of something and then have to drop it because that will cause me to not sleep for like a week. Because um, the whole time I'd be working on the commission, I'd be thinking about the other painting. That's just who I am, unfortunately. I can't just turn off, you know. So the only other option would be to make the commission wait, and I don't think that's fair to the person who's going to be paying me for their, for their artwork. Um, so, buttons, um, button this, press the, you know, press that. I'm kind of adding like a little bit of a vertical, like just slightly off, off from vertical, I guess, line, because these do have like a little carve away, and I want to get that in there too, you know. Now and far. from violin or voice or retrospective could be up here 
other one. Found a voice, okay. I was actually shocked on our, our ride home. Um, I was attempting to save my data as best as I could because we were using the maps like crazy. So I didn't want to use my Amazon Music streaming. So I had stuff that I, you know, I've downloaded off of Google Play that I've, I've had in, you know, it's my old iPods collections, but my iPod shit the bed on me um, a while back. So I've just uploaded everything to Google Play and then I downloaded it onto my phone. So I only had, yeah, it's like maybe a third of my music collection at that. But um, one of the things I have on there too, because I have it on Amazon Music and on Google Play, because I want to make sure I bought it. And I bought it off of Google Play since that's where the majority of my stuff is that I own. Um, I bought Retrospective from Hillary Hahn. And now normally... I try to set up a, you know, like a driving playlist for when my wife and kids are in the car. That doesn't involve classical music because my kids are little heathens. And, um, yeah, my wife just doesn't, let, yeah, she's just not into it at all. But I was actually kind of amazed that my wife did not, I, I didn't do it for this, this road trip. I just didn't even think about it. And uh, I don't remember which Bach it was. Um, but it was something with that was originally off of violin and voice um, came on and like I said normally the second my wife hears anything that bears a resemblance to opera or anything it's what the hell is this shit yeah, get this off I can't listen to this it was not her cup of tea and uh, but she left it I was actually shocked I guess she understands there, there are certain things like I said, I have a weird thing for German soprano. So, sure, the German soprano came on and it was like, eh, he's just going to give me shit if I try to do that. She may have also just been too goddamn tired. That vacation was exhausting. Physically and emotionally and financially. So if you missed some of the stories from the, the other night when I was talking about it, we, um, the vacation basically started off with, uh, we're going down the Skyline Drive. Now, first off, I screwed up. and We were supposed to go to Dinosaur Land. We should go on Dinosaur Land before getting on the Skyline Drive. But we got on Skyline Drive, and um, I was like, all right, we'll go through like the first half, and we'll go to... Scott, Dinosaur Land and Luray Caverns. And then I realized that I had screwed up. So we went basically not the Skyline Drive, way all the way back to the start of the Skyline Drive. If you follow me. And while we were on the Skyline Drive, the car started getting a little rough when we were hitting the brakes. And by the time we got back to um, Front Royal, Virginia, that car was fucking rough. Like, whenever I hit the brakes, it was, like, kind of noise. All right. I was like, dude, this ain't cool. And I kept trying to do it, and then I was realized that something's really wrong. We've got to stop somewhere, you know, and take a look at this. So I pulled into a real estate agent's office. And I'm, I jump out of the car, and I, it was only on the driver's side that I felt this. You know, like, I, I could tell it wasn't coming from the other sides. So I look at the driver's side, and... I could see my rotor is ground to shit. And I'm like, uh, this is really not good. You know? And I'm like, um, so we're in the middle of, I mean, Front Royal is not a small, small town. It's an okay sized town. But as far as I'm concerned, being from Pennsylvania, I don't know it from, you know, all of my ass, you know? Like, I don't know what, I don't know why I said that, but, um, so I had no idea where the hell we were. I had no idea about anything in it, you know, in the town. And I'm looking for something, that, some place that can do my brakes that day. 
because we already had a hotel reserved in Luray with the intention that we would go to Luray Caverns and then go to our hotel, and then the next day we'd finish the Skyline Drive and get to our hotel in, in Williamsburg. Um, so thankfully, Jiffy Lube started doing breaks. So we go there, and the guy's like, all right, it'll be an hour, hour and a half. So I'm like, cool. Let's go get some lunch. So, hour and a half later, and 300 and some odd bucks later, we were back on the road. But at this point, we had enough time to basically get to Dinosaur Land and get to our hotel because we were not going to make it time for Lorraine's closing, too. You know? So that's what we did. Now, as you see, as I'm talking, hopefully you guys see. I'll move it up a little bit so you can get a better view. Should be easier to see that. I'm adding some more details into this than I did on the cup, even. Because, uh, you know what? I can. I mean, this guy's the, the front runner here, so, you know, he can get looked at. I hope this sort of comes visible where you might start to see where my brush strokes start to come into play. Um, you know, like I do tend to still think of them as brush strokes, even more so than pencil strokes. So I will kind of look at it as if I'm adding, okay, maybe here I'm adding a little, you know, Ultramarine violet. Uh, it's very funny because in sophomore year, I think it was sophomore year, I had to do a. Um, our teacher assigned something to, to a painting that was like. He wanted it to be half painting, half drawing. I didn't quite understand what he did and what he meant by that. Um, I originally was going to do it with just like half pencil, half, you know, um, paint. And then I was like, dude, I gotta, it just looked so bad. It looked like it was because my paint's so thick and my pencil underneath the painting was very, very light. I was like, I, I gotta, I gotta do it. So I, I actually added black paint and did it that way. I probably like the look of it, but, I was just like, I, I was kind of confused by it because in my head, that's what I do. Like, it's not, you know, if, if you get a chance to, to, again, I always say, you got to see my paintings in person. If you see my paintings in person, I'm still doing form. I'm still thinking about the three-dimensional shape of the object in my brush stroke. So I'm still drawing in my mind. Just like right now, I'm still kind of painting in my mind, too. They're, they're interlocked. As I said, I could quickly go grab some colored pencils here, and I could turn this into something that would look pretty close to one of my paintings. It has to be handled a little differently, because um, you have to start on the light and move to the darkness. And I realized I got to put my kids to bed, so give me just a few moments. I don't have to take as long, so I don't have to lock myself out, lock myself back in. Uh, I'll be right back.
Oh yeah. There we go. Alright. Uh, sorry if that shook. Sorry. I'm trying to like I said, I wish you guys could see how badly this is set up for me. This is really bad. Um no worse is that this is unlike my normal setup, which I can just leave there in the studio usually. This I gotta move because I know tomorrow morning my son will be down here. Probably the moment I leave for work. Um And he'll be down here jumping on YouTube because he knows he's not allowed to play video games until 8 a.m. But damn it, man, when that clock hits 8.01, he is already logged into the PlayStation and he is ready to go. His friends are sending him messages. I know because I have my uh, PlayStation's message app. So I see them all. honest with you now when my older daughter was younger I had access to um, when she got her Facebook page for the first time when she was I think 12 when she got it yeah the only way like part of the deal for her getting it was that I have her passwords you know I can see everything yeah so she's not getting secret messages by boys or anything like that you know they're which actually funny enough did work out because she had a boyfriend who was trying to send her messages telling her to go out like sneak out and stuff in the middle of the night and I uh was not clean, too clean on that one. Especially when I called the mother about it. I said yeah, I spoke to her about it. I was like, Hey, according to my daughter's messages, your kid was like outside my house at like two AM last night. And she was like, Ah, oh, boys will be boys. It's like, um dude, no. Um not fucking cool. Uh, please to uh, tell your child I will pummel the living shit out of him if I catch him on my property at 2 in the morning. Um, so, yeah. I'll go back into my sad stories with this because, see, and this is one of those things that kind of... Um, was a major contributing factor a while later when my friend Bob died. Because when I found out I was going to be a father in high school with Alexis, all my friends were like, dude, you're going to have a little girl and, you know, we're all going to have to come by and help scare the kids on their first date, you know, blah, 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 scare the boys, make sure they treat her right, you know. All that stuff that, like, standard, you know, sorry to say, macho bullshit, you know. And this. Yeah. If I raised her right, she should be good enough. I think I would do pretty good. But anyway. Um the uh the thing is, when the time came for her to start dating and stuff, out of everybody, the only one who kinda did fill that role like they said they were going to, was my friend Bob. Um that was one of those things that, like I said, um, when I've talked about this before, is Bob was that guy that you always felt you could trust. And he'd do what he said he was going to do. And, you know, if you needed to... I always fall back on, like, there was a thing many, 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 many years ago, where I've been mean, talking probably, like, AOL days, you know. Um, be passed around saying, you know, you know who your f true friends are, you could test, or you could test how your, who your true friends are by coming to their house covered in like pig's blood, and it's like just tell them you, you know, you fucked up, and see what they do. You know, a friend will try to talk you into, you know, uh, surrendering yourself to the cops, and you know, and try to tell you they'll help with the courts or whatever. And it's a, a true friend will go grab a trash bag and a shovel, and uh. You know, I always felt that I could trust Bob to grab a shovel and a trash bag, probably a hacksaw too, 
tell me where a good place to hide the body would be. You know what I mean? Like, it's like one of those things. Like, I'd go an extra step even. Um, which is why when I found out that, like I said, he had been uh, a heroin addict and he had hidden that from me, it kind of blew my fucking mind. Um, you know, and since he had died from it before I could, when I found out, there's no way for me to confront him and, you know, freak out on it. I would have freaked out on it, I know. I would have beat the shit out of him, probably. Yeah. It would have been a hell of a fight. Don't get me wrong. Bob was not somebody that was going to be pushed over easily. Um, but, then you got into a fight and beat the hell out of each other, and then we would have carried each other away broken and bleeding. And gotten his ass back into rehab. But, I digress. Um, but when that kid was sneaking around, Bob and I went for one of our pool games, and I was telling him about it, because I had to go pick up Alexis before um, we went out. And he's like, all right, just follow my lead. So Ali got in the car, and Bob's telling him, yeah. He literally started, like, mid-sentence. He, I, he just said, follow my lead. I, we weren't talking about anything related to it. And he just starts, you know, well, like I was saying, you know, the uh, the, the shotguns that just fire these beanbags, they're real nice, non-violent, you know, because I know you don't want anything lethal in your house. <laughs> he just keeps going. It was so funny because it was just like, holy, and, and I'm watching Alexis in the back because she, she originally expected to get into the passenger seat, but there's Bob. So I'm watching her eyes in the background just get fucking bigger and bigger. She's just like... I can tell she's freaking the shit out. Like, she's just, she knows what we're talking about. Like, you know, who we're talking about specifically. That being her boyfriend at the time. And, uh, so she's like, I was half expected to see her, like, just stare down at her phone. Just, you know, kind of thing. Send him a message, basically, we're breaking up now before you die. Beautiful moment. I will add a side note because, as I said, if you, you know, if I raised her right, she should have been fine. And she, according to her, and according to the fact that I, nine times out of ten, was monitoring the situation very quietly from my upstairs, um, like when she would have sleepovers and stuff with her friends down here, they they would stay down here in the basement because there's a fold-out couch. Um, they did not sneak out. So technically I did good. I didn't really need to be overly intimidating, but let's be honest. There's a dude sneaking around my house at 2 in the morning. Right? Like, I wish there was somebody here who was responding, because I would like to know the opinion that I, I think I was in the right. Right? It's, it's giving them a little scary, you know. Like I said, we didn't directly threaten the kid in any way, shape, or form. I never met him, actually. But just by having Allie kind of there to, you know, report back to him, like, later on, like, hey, you know, my dad's talking about getting, like, a beanbag shotgun and alarms in, around the house, you know. Because Bob totally played it off with the whole, like, ah, oh, you know, it's like, a, your dad's been saying that there's been some people that have been, like, kind of prowling around. He's not sure what's going on, you know, and I, we, we grew up in Leadham, you know, because... So we know the neighborhood, and we know it's not always the best of places. So we, you know, I can help your father with some. Uh, I do some some security consulting. So that's why your dad and I are hanging out tonight. So it's like we were threatening, but not really. You know, just sort of okay. Now, as I said earlier, I like to not do labels. Um, but if I have to, like, look, it's a Guinness bottle. And in a sense, I do kind of like to be like, look, this is something I enjoy. I enjoy Guinness. Um, so what I'll do is, like, if you, you can see it from your angle, um, from this thing. The label here is obscured a little bit. You know? So I see Nunes, you know? And it's clear up top, but... 
Going back to our ideas here about, you know, um, cylinders. Again, I'm kind of thinking about the bottle, not as a cylinder. But it's two. Again, I hope you guys can see this clearly. I'm trying, I'm not going to switch out to the harder lead pencil. Or to the softer lead pencil. You know, but you just kind of whoop, put some, carve some lines there together, and now you got another one. Makes sense. I hope everybody's. Pick, I really do hope somebody picks something up from this stuff. I will be honest, I was thinking on my way down here, I wish I had some pastels. Um. My pastels that I had, unfortunately, I had some nice, really nice ones, actually. And, of course, they were in um, a uh, Tupperware container, which I thought would have kept them safe. But when my hot water heater blew up a few years ago, they um, the, the Tupperware container got tilted. And so the top the lid right off and the... Out went my pastels. My uh, studio floor was like tie dyed for like you know a month and a half or so. So I started cleaning it up, but I just didn't have the money to. Even after the insurance payments came through, it was like, man, eh, I can't really replace those right now. I had to take that money and put it elsewhere in the house. Stuff that like kind of got overlooked. I should be told, guys, for the drawing, I think I'm going to ignore the labels entirely because it's almost time to close it out. So I just want to get the, I want to get this thing looking pretty good for you and then just call it for the night. So we're going to move into detailing this stuff a little bit. In the land, I can almost hear the famine dripping through my troubling head. I won't lie. One of the reasons I like to I want to try to keep this tight to 10:30 tonight is, uh, yeah, during the summertime, so my wife's a teacher. She's home. She's like a teacher at like a, um, I guess it's kind of like a daughter school type thing. It's it's Chesterbrook Academy, but it's a similar type idea. Most people know that more than they know Chesterbrook Academy. Um, so it's a uh, She's, she's technically a contracted worker, so she gets, like, you know, she's home, but she's not really, like, like a teacher where they get paid over the summer. Like, you know, like a, a public school teacher, I should say. But she's still a teacher. Um, but she's home, and the thing is, I mean, she stays up a little later. Whereas during the school year, she's in bed by 10. She's up a little later, which means I get a little bit of cuddling time. That's nice. Illuminate the nose on their vacancy signs. But there's no one beside you when your soul embarks. And I'll follow you into the dark. 
Catholic school. Vicious as Roman rule. I got my knuckles bruised by a lady in black. I held my tongue as she told me, son, fear is the heart of love. So I never went back. If heaven and hell decide that they both are satisfied, illuminate the nose on their vacancy signs. But there's no one beside you when your soul embarks, and I'll follow you into the dark. You and me. I've seen everything to see, from Bangkok to Calgary, and the soles of your shoes are all worn down. The time for sleep is now, there's nothing to cry about, as we'll hold each other soon in the blackest of rooms. Heaven and hell decide that they both are satisfied. Illuminate the nose on their vacancy signs. If there's no one beside you when your soul embarks, then I'll follow you into the dark. I'll follow you into the dark. Oh, yeah, I'm moving a little faster now, so hopefully this will... I can do it without making it look too sloppy, too. Like I said, I want to get this close. It's a little late starting, so I'm going to try to go a little longer, but not too long. Oh, I've been streaming now. Tells me somewhere, doesn't it? Shite. Where is it? I don't know if I could trust that though, because I think it comes in like an hour, like it comes in like 20 minutes late on the, uh, tell me I'm alive. I guess it sounds about right. So what I'm going to do, I'm just sitting on the dock of the bay, watching the tide. Okay, so I'm going to forego the the labels. If I were painting it, you know, eh, probably I'd do it. But we're not painting it. Look like nothing's gonna change. Everything seems to stay the same. I can't do what ten people tell me to do. So I guess I remain the same. Sit here resting my bones this loneliness won't leave me alone for two thousand miles I roam just to make this dock my home can somebody explain that distance to me because I've had having trouble with this song since I've heard it when I was like 10 I'm saying 10 because it's like the first, like that's about time you start really listening to music. All right. I mean, I'm sure I heard it like in my dad's car when I was like six or something even less, but you know, really I think 10 is when you start to become a, really aware of music. Do you know what I mean? Like that's where my son started to pick up on like Queen and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it was more than just shit that daddy listens to. You know what I mean? Okay. He left his home in Georgia, headed for the Frisco Bay. Okay, so unless I'm mistaken, it's implied he is in the Frisco Bay area. That's the dock he's sitting on, correct? I mean, all right, but using that as a hypothesis. And, and if I'm wrong, 
God, somebody explained it to me. But, um, okay, so it, Georgia to San Francisco. Yeah, we don't know exactly where in Georgia, but even if he's on the, the farthest west side of Georgia, that's a fuck ton more than 2,000 fucking miles, right? Like, I'm not crazy on this, right? Because I'm just thinking, like, I mean, Pennsylvania going across is 400 plus miles. So, how the fuck did it, is, you're telling me it's only f distance of five Pennsylvanias to California? Chad last. Chad last. I mean, I'm not, I'm not cuckoo here, right? I mean, I'm cuckoo, but like, you know what I mean. Like, I'm right about this, right? That's like the timeline of um, scenes from an Italian restaurant. I, I will be very honest with you. I love that song, and I despise it because the timeline makes no sense. You know? They decided the wedding would be in the early July or whatever, blah, 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 right? And they're talking about in the summer of 75, I think, or something around that line. But by this, he says, he says by the summer of 75, they decided that, you know, or that it had enough. For, I forget exactly. Don't ask me to quote the lyrics right because I don't remember them clearly. But if you listen to the timeline of when they got married, and by the, by the end of that summer, they've called it quits. And it's like, dude, they got married at the end of July. So by the end of that summer, they've they're done. That means they got married and divorced within a month. I mean, it makes my ex-wife and I's relationship look like it was a fucking you know lengthy marriage. It was only eight months, but I mean. It sure it felt that way. It felt like a long time. I'm sure for her just as much as it did for me. Yeah. They were torturous to each other. But that being said, I mean, shit. At least we gave it a, a good old college try compared to those two. Ah, uh, morphine, man. I was reading up on this. This really was, if, if you guys aren't familiar with the story of morphine and Mark Sandman's death, that's really a fucking sad tale. I'm going to save this, and this will be my last bit. And eh, whatever we're done, we're done. You know what I mean? Um, so morphine, if you guys aren't familiar, 90s band that was very unique. They They don't sound like, I mean, there are a lot of 90s bands that don't sound like 90s bands, so to speak. Like, if you're thinking of grunge, you know, as your only influence of the, the alternative scene of that time. Um, the one thing I've always loved about the 90s music is that there was a lot of stuff that didn't sound like other stuff, but it was all kind of alternative. You were okay to listen to, like, you know, uh, The Flaming Lips and... They might be giants along with Nirvana and still consider yourself like in the same alternative group as, you know, people listen to R.E.M. and, you know, stuff like that. So, I, that's all of the rant. But anyway, um, yeah, it's not really a rant so much as like a, my own personal view of how awesome it was. But Morphine was like just a super cool, you know, groovy band. Um, for the most part, I think all their bass riffs were like basically two strings. All right. Like. You know, like that's it. Um, sax, sometimes even they're doing the sax through an actual wah pedal, which is kind of neat and very cool sounding. Um, lots of cool stuff from them. They got signed to, I think it's like DreamWorks labels or something like that. Like I think it's like a record label version for DreamWorks. I believe it's the same company. Don't quote me on that. Whatever. But it was like a big label signing for them when they, they got it. They'd put out uh, other albums before this. In fact, some of the best albums I think I've ever heard. Um, if you've never listened to Cure for Pain, um, uh, I'm, I consider that album probably close to a masterpiece. It's a fucking great album. 
Um, I can listen to the whole thing and never change, you never hit skip, you know? That's always a good thing for an album. Uh oh, I think I'm running low on lead. Hope I have more. Um, or it's going to cut the short sooner sooner. Okay. Anyway, so they got signed to this and they made the album The Night. Which, for even Morphine, was a pretty dark album. It's, a, it's, it's different, most certainly, from even their other stuff. It's a moody, 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 moody album. While they were on tour to start promoting it, before the album's even been released, um, Mark Salmon died on stage uh, in Rome, I believe. Um... The record label had already kind of heard some of the previews from the album, and they were not happy. They wanted something that sounded like Beck, and they got The Night, um, which sounds nothing like Beck. So, Morphine, you know, here they are, their, their lead singer just dies. And like a week later, like it was like no time later, the album's due to come out, and the record label literally comes up to them and says, Hey, guys, I know this is a bad time for you and all, um, but we're not going to support this album. We'll put it out, but we're not going to put any, you know, um, advertising behind it. Uh, just so you guys know. And it's like, holy shit, what a dick move. Um I just want to make sure not writing it. Okay. Like, they literally told them, like, hey, we get it, your lead singer just died. We don't like your album, so fuck you. And I was like, that sucks, dude. That's just like, and we, uh, my, my friends and I just, like, happened to have been going through borders um, not long after we had heard the news that he had died. And um, we were, at the time, um, actually, like, my bandmates or whatever, we were all covering the song, like, we were covering Buena, um, off of Cure for Pain. And uh, it was like, we're going through Borders music, you know, section or whatever, and there's The Night by Morphine. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, how did I not even know this album just came out? Like... Well, now the story is out, and how, you know, obviously, because the record company told them to go fuck themselves. And, uh, and then, like, it gets worse because, because they had only really had one album through DreamWorks or whatever, and the other stuff was through another label, um, and I don't remember who, unfortunately, this time, but the... The whole thing got, like, when they wanted to do, like, some unreleased tracks and stuff that they had had, um, left over from, like, you know, studio sessions and stuff, the the two companies started getting into a pissing match about who owned the rights to them. And, you know, the the original one was telling them they can't release the goddamn album. And it's like, holy shit! Like, you know, usually you have, you know, budding... Uh, you know, rock band or whatever, you know, lead singer dies. You almost run into the opposite situation where it's like, no, we want to put it out. No, we want to put it out. No, we want to put it out. They didn't want to put it out. They just wanted to stop, um, I guess, DreamWorks or just Morphine on their own, you know, the rem remnants of Morphine, from putting anything out. I was like, holy shit, dude, this guy's got fucked hard. Now, I'm assuming this all got worked out Eventually, because I remember hearing Buena being used um, on, like, a car commercial. Um, so I hope they figured this fucking shit out. And that more f the bands, you know, members are at least getting a little money off of, off of their work for all those years. Um, you know? And I hope it's not just the... Uh, the record company making their money off of that. Because honestly... As bad as they were apparently treating the, you know, the band, they should go fuck themselves if, if they are, and they're and not giving that money to the, the uh, remaining members. 
Um, so, all right, we're just about finished here. I do always like the kind of amorphosis uh, coloring you can kind of get from a bottle. You know what I mean? Like, even though, like, Guinness actually has, like, a little bit of a wrap around it, but, like, they still kind of give you that same, like, bottle-y look, you know? So it's like you can get all sorts of different little... little moments that just, you know... A very uh, varying shading that can kind of be, like I said, not really. They don't have to be locked into something specific. You can kind of make it work. We have trouble, friend, at home because she's gonna block the car. I'm afraid of no man with any arc and pen, but I cannot compete with you, big fat friend. So what do you think? It says there's one viewer. You there? I mean, I'll move it back into the screen. Not too bad, right? So. I appreciate all the feedback. Yes, I'm being incredibly sarcastic. And I'm spiteful. And yes, I'm blocking you out because I'm taking the picture of it. All right. So, see what you friend. I'll nail you anyhow. I know that he's no looker and he's had a couple of rounds. But with every shot of Jaeger, hey, you lose a couple pounds. Baby, 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 from an evening to an end. Cause you and me and your pal and your big fat friend. Alright, I think we're gonna. Think that one work. Alright, I'm gonna. Cut this, I think, out like Dave Coulier. Um, so, obviously, no stream tomorrow. It's Tuesday. Um, and uh, not sure what I'm doing Wednesday. Like I said, I don't want to start any painting. But maybe we'll break out the colored pencils or something. Maybe we'll do something that's like prep work for the painting. You know, like he did send me pictures of his barn and... Um, uh, house and stuff, so maybe we'll just do like a little sketch, you know, again, it's not going to be the angle we're going to work off of, but sometimes it helps, again, we're talking about three dimensions in the drawing, um, it helps to look at, you know, I'm going to just pull it up, but like, say, like, you're, you're looking at the coffee mug from the angle that you guys have it at this point, but to be able to look at it, like, try to pull it in the spot, like, you know, like from that, or from that, or, you know, like I'm trying to give you more three-dimensional shots, but do you know what I mean? Like, or from there. Like, to literally start to understand the volume. Um, so, whatever. As I said, I'm trying, I'm trying to stay flexible this week because I want to make sure that hopefully starting Sunday, we're working on this commission. Um, you know. That's two in a row, right? Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. That's well, it's three this year, so that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, take that art world. I'm getting there eventually. So, peace out, guys. See you on Wednesday. Like I said, maybe we'll do some coloring stuff.